Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears and this is the all new Kia EV6. Now, just like Hyundai, Kia has had amazing success with its first generation electric vehicle, the e Nero. However, that car was limited to what it could do because it was based on a platform designed to incorporate an internal combustion engine. So Hyundai Group got together and created the electric global modular platform in which to build all of their latest generation ground up electric vehicles. Now we've already had two helpings already, one from Hyundai and the second from Genesis with the Ionic 5 and the GV60. And here is Kia's helping using that platform, the EV6. Now there's been a lot of hype around this car as well as the Ionic 5. So I've had this EV6 for a week and I'm gonna let you know well, if it's any good or not. When it comes to styling, the first thing I wanna say is that I love the fact that the first three cars built on this platform all look completely different. You got the concept car looks of the Ionic 5, the bold yet sophisticated looks of the GV60, and with this EV6, we definitely have an aggressive and quite sporty looking electric vehicle. At the front, it definitely looks really purposeful, but at the back, it's got kind of like a weird concept car look about it. And we've seen that again now as well in the new Sportage. But it's the little things I love about the EV6. We've got a couple of vents that open up when you start the car up to let you know it's gonna cool down some of the uh, workings on the inside. We've got the wing mirrors that got a very unique design and clearly been designed in a wind tunnel. And also on that note, we've got these little winglets that are popping up just behind the rear passenger doors. And they do remind me a little bit of the tail fin of an F-104 Starfighter. Yes, I know I'm showing my kind of aviation nerdy side, but please, you know, bear with me on that. But also, I just love the fact that it's actually got quite a purposeful stance about it, even though Kia would say this is a little bit of a crossover slash SUV because of the slightly raised ride height. But no, I think of it as a very large hatchback. And just like the Ionic 5, it's much bigger in the metal than it is when you look at it in pictures. And in fact, I think the Ionic 5 just hides its kind of mass a little bit better than the EV6. The one thing about the EV6 that I've noticed is that it does remind me a little bit of the Renault Velocitis. However, this is bound to be a lot more successful than that French hatchback. But let me know what you think of the styling of the EV6 as well as the Ionic 5 and the GV60. And one final thing I will mention is that this interstellar grey and metallic paint, which looks really gorgeous on the EV6, is only available on the entry level air trim. So just be aware of that if you really wanna go for this kind of moody gray color on your electric vehicle. But anyway, I think that's enough of looking at the exterior of the EV6, although I could look at it all day. Let's see what Kia have done with that interior. Sat in the front of the EV6, you are greeted by a very comfortable and very nicely laid out interior. Now I will note that if you have gone to look at an Ionic 5, it will feel quite familiar in here in the EV6, but just like Genesis, Kia have gone their own way with kind of designing their interior using pretty much the same technology as those other two cars. Now, because this is a large hatchback, I refuse to call it a crossover or small SUV. It does mean you've got a slightly raised driving position. So getting in and out of the EV6 is really easy. So if you do suffer from any kind of mobility issues, then this is definitely one car to look at. Now, because I've got the entry level air, the actual adjustment in the seat is manual, but we have got lumbar support. And also with the steering, where we've got both rake and reach adjustment. So getting the perfect driving position is easy. Interior quality in the EV6 is actually pretty good. Now we've got this kind of textured plastic here on the dash and I do like the way it kind of breaks apart towards the edge of the dashboard there and it's also seen there on the speakers. We've got soft touch plastic here on top of the doors and on the door panels, but when it comes to the hard scratchy plastics, we have got some lower down, but on top of the dash and that, we have got a lot of piano black plastic, which looks really lovely, but it is prone to scratches and smudging. So it's just a little bit disappointing that there's a lot of it here and I'm probably guessing that on a sunny day it might be prone to creaking. But that's something that you guys will have to let me know if you are an EV6 owner. But other than that, it's actually really nice in here. I mean, firstly, these seats feel really lovely, very comfortable and they do hold a big bear in place. And these are the standard kind of vegan approved leather that you can get on there. So I really do like that you get leather seats as standard. 
cubby spaces in the EV6 are actually pretty good, but there are a couple of areas where it's a bit surprising and lacking compared to the Genesis and the Hyundai. Now, firstly, the door pockets are of a decent size. They are lined with fabric, so loose items shouldn't rattle around in there, and you can get a medium-sized bottle of drink. Now, underneath the center console, we have got a big tray area, which is perfect for putting large items there, and it is rubber lined. Then on top of the center console, we have got two cup holders here, which are of a decent size and depth, and they are rubber lined, and they have got a couple of plastic grippers in there. Then next to that, we have got an area which is clearly a wireless charging pad, if you go for a spec where it's actually on the vehicle, but it's actually just a nice place to put your phone whilst you're on the move. Now, there is a little divider here as well, which is very handy. So if you don't want to use the rear cup holder, you can put some larger items in there. Then underneath the armrest, we have got a decent amount of storage space there. And there is a little bit of fabric at the bottom as well. So loose items shouldn't rattle around in there. Now, when it comes to the glove box, unlike the Genesis and the Hyundai, where you've got this kind of pull out tray, we actually have a traditional glove box, which is blumming huge the only disappointing thing is that it's not lined with any fabric but i do like this book pack which is made out of recycled leather and plastic so it shows kia are you know looking to save the environment there and that's pretty much it now the one thing that's a little bit disappointing especially when compared to the genesis and the hyundai is where we've got our usb a and usb c charging inputs on the other two cars, there was a little pouch area where you could put your phone, and it's actually really nice because you can put it in there and it's out the way. But in the EV6, I actually have to kind of put it in this large tray area, otherwise my phone will just be kind of sliding about all over the floor. So I was a little bit disappointed by that. Now on the large tray area, we have got two more charging inputs, one a USB-C and the other is a 12 volt socket. So that's actually really handy that you can charge four devices down there. But I'd love to see something like, I don't know, maybe even a fabric pouch so you could put your phone in there like the Honda E. At least that way your phone is nicely tucked away and isn't going anywhere. Because I've always been kind of driving around kind of a little bit fearful that I'm going to turn a corner and perhaps, you know, my phone will move and pull out of the charging socket. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, of course, this being an electric vehicle, Kia have taken away a lot of the physical buttons that you would usually find in an ICE vehicle. But compared to the Genesis and the Hyundai, Kia have actually taken away a few more buttons as well. So in terms of actual physical buttons, we've got two rotary knobs here on the main dashboard. We've got your heated seats and heated steering wheel button, your EV start stop button, a rotary dial there for the gear selector, and we've got three buttons here for auto hold, parking sensors and your parking camera of course then we have got your steering wheel controls and then we've got all the buttons here for your window controls as well as your main handbrake along with your traction control and also to open up your charging port flap so there's actually not many buttons in here now with the genesis and the hyundai we actually had physical shortcut buttons for the infotainment system but believe it or not they're here on the main dashboard but this is kind of the interior's USP because there's actually a button here where you can go from the dual zone climate control straight to those shortcut buttons, which is actually, I think, really clever. And I like the fact as well that they're actually nicely laid out. So it does mean that even when you're on the move, it's easy to hit those buttons and kind of adjust your temperature or adjust the direction of the fans. So that's something I really do like. It is a nice quirky feature. I don't think it's going to be to everyone's taste. I think some people will prefer physical buttons, in which case look at the Ionic 5. But I do like that feature. Now, if it's something that we see on further Kias, then, then that will be really cool to see. But yeah, I really did like that on here on the EV6. Now, on the dashboard, we've got two 12.3-inch displays. Now, one of them is your digital dashboard display, and the other is your infotainment touchscreen display. And if you have driven or used a modern day Kia or Hyundai, it's going to feel very familiar and very at home for you. The menus are nice and easy to read. It's easy to operate when on the move. And I actually like the kind of responsiveness of it. It is actually really quick. Of course, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is always very handy. But the icons and everything are actually of a decent size. So again, it's not too fiddly to use when on the move. 
And then we've got the 12.3 digital dashboard display. Again, the same size as the infotainment screen, but I really do like the animations on there. They seem to be a bit more fluid and crisper in their display, and it's nice and easy to read when on the move. And you can have a good amount of data to kind of be provided for you using the buttons on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Now, speaking of the steering wheel controls, on the left-hand side, we've got your adaptive cruise control. And as I mentioned, we have got your driving data controls. Now, underneath there, we have also got a drive mode select. So we have got your usual eco, normal, and sport. And if you press and hold it, it will go to snow or mud. But on a day like today, I've not needed that. And then on the right hand side, we have got your audio and communication controls. And there is actually a dedicated star button there, which you can kind of assign to it using the main infotainment system. So that is pretty handy. And then the paddles on the back of the steering wheel, they operate your regen braking. And you can actually have a one pedal style of driving, but it's not as strong as something like a Nissan Leaf. But for the most part, you will kind of drive without using the brake pedal, which is actually really handy and does add a few extra hundred yards to the range of your uh, EV6. So that is really good. But yeah, all in all, when it comes to the interior of the EV6, it is a really nice, comfortable, pleasant place to be. I will mention that I do love the surrounds of the screens. I like the black on here on the EV6 rather than the white on the Ionic 5. I think this kind of just suits the display a bit more. But that's actually kind of the main thing about the EV6 is that it's very nice, it's very pleasant and very comfortable. And it really comes down to personal preference, which one you prefer. Do you want to be here in the EV6 or perhaps the Ionic 5? Or maybe you just want to stay away from Hyundai Group and prefer something like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. But either way, that's the great thing about electric vehicles nowadays is that there are more and more choices available. But I am really impressed with the interior of the EV6. There is a lot of standard kits and it is a very nice and comfortable place to be. But you know what? On that note, I think it's enough of sitting here in the front of the EV6. Let's see what it's like in the back. Sat in the back of the EV6, it's actually very comfortable and very spacious back here. Now, the first thing I will mention the fact is that the top of the door frames are quite low, so be careful not to bang your head when you're getting in and out of the vehicle. And then once you sat here, you find that there's plenty of space. That driver's seat is set to my driving position, and I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And as you can see, I've got loads of knee room, and headroom is not too bad either. You should be able to get a couple of six footers sat in the back of the EV6. Also, check out that shape of that headrest. I really do like that. Something I forgot to mention when I was sat in the front. But I love the fact that it protrudes forward, just like a Porsche Taycan. So you don't have to lean your head that far back when you want to relax on a long journey. Anyway, back to the uh, rear seats of the EV6. Now, when it comes to children, we have got Isofix supports on the outer seats. But there are no plastic covers. And the metalwork is a little bit exposed, but it might need a bit of jiggery-pokery when they're fixing a child seat. Cubby spaces are pretty good back here as well. We've got some okay sized door bins. Yes, they are lined with fabric and you can get a medium sized bottle of drink in there. We have got your airplane star pockets on the backs of the front seats. And also we've got an armrest with a couple of extra cup holders. But what I love is you can slide it back and actually have it as a dedicated tray to perhaps put your phone in there. So that is handy. I will mention as well, we have got a bit of through loading there from the boot so if you have got any longer items they can come through here into the rear passenger area which is really useful now the windows they are of a decent size they do allow a nice bit of light in and they do open all the way down which is really handy and then when it comes to charging any mobile devices we have got two USB-C charging inputs here on the insides of the seats and that's actually really quite cool I have seen that before on the Kia Sorento but it's great to see it here on the EV6. So all in all, it's actually not too bad sat in the back of the EV6. The only kind of negatives I've come across is the build quality does take a little bit of a step down back here in the EV6. And also I can't quite get my feet underneath the driver's seat, which is a little bit disappointing. But other than that, it's actually really good. And one final thing I will mention is that you can recline the seats back a little bit so you can relax on a longer journey. But on that note, I think that's enough of looking at the rear seats of the EV6. Let's see what it's like in that boot. Opening the boot of the EV6 presents you with 490 litres of space, which is more than a Mustang Mach-E, but less than the likes of a Skoda Enyaq. 
And yes, you don't get a power tailgate on the entry level air spec. You gotta go a little bit higher up for that. But when the boot is open, you find it's got a nice wide square load area. So you can easily get a couple of suitcases or a few weekend bags in there. Now it's not devoid of features either. We have got a 12 volt socket. We have got a few tethering hooks. However, they're not the sturdiest because they are made of plastic. We've got a couple of handles as well. So you can easily get the rear seats down and you have an almost flat load area. Also underneath the boot floor, we do get a bit of additional space. So you can put a couple of items back there, including the tonneau cover, which I really like. And then we've also got a bit of extra space underneath the second boot floor, which is really handy. We also have a frunk on the EV6. Now on this rear wheel drive version, we actually have 50 liters of space, which is very handy for storing your charging cables. But if you go for the all wheel drive version, that does drop to around 20 liters. So something to just be aware of, and you could probably get one lot of cables under your frunk on the all wheel drive version but that is really handy. But actually the EV6 is a very practical car. You can move the tonneau cover back a little bit if you want to recline the seats. And it is actually a very versatile boot area. The only thing that's a little bit kind of deceptive is the fact that it looks like a massive boot area with this big boot lid. And then when you open it, it's a little bit smaller than expected, but it's still a decent size. But on that note, I actually think it's uh, time we take this EV6 for a drive and see what it's all about there. So once you get driving in the EV6, first impressions are really positive. I mean, it does drive like a lot of these new electric vehicles. It's very refined, very comfortable and easy to drive. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't see these cars as crossovers or SUVs. I just see them as very large family hatchbacks. So as a result, I have got a slightly raised driving position. I've got a really good view of the road ahead. Surprisingly though, the A pillars are really thick and because of the way that they're kind of angled and raked, I have found myself on a couple of occasions looking around them at junctions. Now the wing mirrors are of a really decent size, but quite an odd shape, especially with the uh, kind of surrounding edges to them. But I think that's all for aerodynamics. And on this particular air trim, you don't get blind spot detection as standard. And then finally, looking over my shoulder, I see that I've actually got a reasonably thin C pillar. So that does help with blind spot visibility and rear visibility is not too bad. However, some of its rivals have got a more a more clearer view of what's behind you because on the EV6 we've got that quite high roof to the boot so as a result it does mean you've not necessarily got a letterbox view looking out behind but it is a little bit narrower than some of its rivals and one of the big issues as well on the EV6 same as on the Ionic 5 and will probably be on the GV60 as well is that we've got no rear wiper blade which means on a typical British day where you have typical British weather like I have today, it has been raining as you can see from the wet ground. I've basically got rain now on that rear screen and as a result, well, it does kind of cover a bit of your view. It does obstruct it a little bit and it doesn't matter how fast you go. I mean, I've gone to just a smidge over 70 miles an hour and it will not clear, it will not budge. Now that's great when it comes to things like aerodynamics, but it's bad when it comes to rear visibility. Now the positive I've come across so far is that it's not kicking up any of the dirt and grime from the road. That's purely rain that's just sitting on that rear screen. So that's just again, something to be aware of if you are looking at the EV6. But other than that, first impressions of this electric vehicle from Kia are really positive. I can see why so many people like it. Now there are three trim levels to choose from in the EV6 range. There is a fourth coming soon, but that's the top of the range fire breathing GT model, kind of like the Hyundai Ioniq 5N, and that's gonna be the performance version. But at the moment, the three trim levels you could choose from is the entry level Air, which is what I've got here, the GT line, and then the top of the range GT line S. And I'll be honest, I'm really impressed with what you get as standard on this Air. I mean, at the moment, the only things I'm really kind of missing out on is blind spot detection and perhaps a 360 degree camera. But other than that, I feel as though I've got everything that I would want as standard on a car. I've got the two big infotainment screens. I've also got heated seats, heated steering wheel, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. 
adaptive cruise control. I mean, yeah, I'm not really wanting for much else apart from, like I said, blind spot detection and maybe a 360 degree camera. But other than that, now I've got, you know, these vegan friendly leather seats. So it's not like I'm kind of got cloth or anything like that. I just feel as though I've got, yeah, everything I need kit wise as standard. So that would possibly be my kind of choice to go for or go for the GT line one above because that way you have got the choice of going for either the rear wheel drive version of the EV6 or the all wheel drive version of the EV6. Now, yes, that is a little bit heavier, but at least you got that kind of security of knowing you got all wheel drive grip. So that would be my kind of pick of the range. Go for the air, but if you want just a little bit more, by all means, go for the GT line. But again, you could go for that and then go for the rear wheel drive version and just get a bit more kit. It's up to you. Now, when it comes to powering your EV6, it's nice and simple because there's one battery available. It's a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and in rear wheel drive guys, it produces 226 brake horsepower and in all wheel drive guys, it produces 321. Now, the important question obviously is gonna come down to range. Now, yes, if you go for the rear wheel drive version, you get a little bit more than the all wheel drive version, but they're both still very respectable. So with the rear wheel drive version, I've got a range of 328 miles. And with the all wheel drive version of the EV6, I've got a range of 314 miles, which is actually really impressive. Now, performance wise, when it comes to 0 to 62 times, with this rear wheel drive version, it's about 7.2 seconds. And with the all wheel drive version, it's a bit more hot hatch territory, it's actually 5.2 seconds. So that is really impressive. But even with this rear wheel drive version, it just keeps going. It actually feels much more quicker than that 7.2 seconds suggests. So that's just something to be aware of. But I am really impressed with the all-round performance of the EV6. It's got the perfect amount of power for everyday driving, and it's not really gonna scare you like something like a Tesla Model S Plaid or something. So what's it like charging your EV6? Well, as we pretty much all know now, Hyundai Group as a whole are pretty much setting the benchmark when it comes to charging standards of your electric vehicle. So the headline with the EV6 is that with a supercharger, you can go from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes, which is absolutely mind blowing. And that's actually better than some of the premium rivals out there that are way more expensive than the EV6. Also though, when it comes to kind of your traditional way of charging your car, because you're not gonna be using a supercharger all the time, then it is a little bit more, yes, a little bit more humble. So if you're gonna use a three pin socket, for example, that's 34 hours to charge up your EV6. So essentially that's your weekend sorted, but that's fine because that means you can just go out in your GT Stinger. Now, if you use a seven kilowatt charger, you're gonna be looking at around 11 hours charge up the EV6. If you then go to a 22 kilowatt charger, you're looking at seven hours. And then for some of the more faster chargers, like a 50 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt, you're looking at around an hour or around 20 minutes or so, going again from 10 to 80% with the EV6. So it's actually really respectable when you go for some of the quicker chargers out there. And it means you're not gonna have to add too long a time to your journey if you're looking to do a long route in your Kia. So yeah, when it comes to the charging capabilities of this electric cap uh, car, they're actually really good. Now, not only that, we've also got the regen braking system on this EV6, which is the same that I've experienced with the Genesis and also with the Hyundai. So you've got around five or six levels of regeneration to look at. You can have it essentially where it just coasts for England and it doesn't really put anything back into the battery. Or you can go all the way to the strongest setting, which is the iPedal, where essentially for the most part, you can do one pedal braking. But I'll be honest, it's not as strong as say what you get in the Nissan Leaf. That's got proper one pedal braking and you very rarely need to put your foot on the brake pedal. But it does mean though, once you get used to it, you'll probably do around about 80% of your driving in the EV6 without having to touch the brake pedal. But there will be a couple of occasions you might just need to kind of give it a bit of assistance. But it's really nice to kind of see that you have got those kind of options available and they're all operated using the flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel. So yeah, when it comes to the EV6 and its regeneration and recharging capabilities, 
they're pretty much near top of the class. So what's the ride refinement and handling like in the EV6? Well, ride-wise, it's really good. It deals with the bumps and imperfections really well. Yes, some of the booms and vibrations you do feel in here coming into the cabin. Now that's because if you drive an Ionic 5 and then you drive the EV6, you do find that this feels more sportier and firmer in its suspension setup. So we kind of see the Ionic 5 as the big comfy cruiser and this one as more of the sportier electric vehicle, which is absolutely fine because that's what Kia are going for. But when you get up to speed, and I'm doing about 50 miles an hour now, it does settle down. Yes, you still get some of the little bumps and vibrations coming into the cabin, but it does feel much more refined at speed. So just be aware of that, that at slow speed or lower speeds, it can be a little bit, yeah, a little bit firm, especially on a poor road surface. But what that means is though, when you chuck it into corners, is that there's hardly any roll or lean. So it does actually feel very planted to the road, even with this rear wheel drive version of the EV6. Now with that as well, we come on to the refinement side of the EV6, which for the most part is really good. However, you can probably hear that there's a bit of tire roar coming into the cabin. And that's really the main intrusion. I mean, I'll be honest, if you get up to about 60, 70 miles an hour, you do get a bit of wind noise coming off the A-pillar, but it's not too intrusive. Now, even though I've got the base spec air, the sound system is actually really good. So it does take away some of that exterior noise coming into the cabin. Of course, if you go for the top of the range GT Line S, you do get a Meridian sound system, and I'd love to see what that is like. But when driving the EV6 for day-to-day, driving you're gonna have no issues with the car whatsoever but just be aware if you're after a comfy car or a comfy electric vehicle the ionic 5 will be the one to go for but i will mention as well just before i kind of move on to the handling side that this does feel more comfortable than something like a mustang mach -E, again particularly at lower speed so what's the ev6's handling like well it's actually really good. There's a nice feel to the steering wheel. I mean, just in the fact of the quality of the leather, but also you do get a nice bit of feedback coming through to let you know what the front wheels are doing. And you can chuck it into corners with a little bit of enthusiasm and it will reward you. And that's even with this rear wheel drive version. Of course, if you want that added security of all wheel drive, then of course, go up to the GT Line or GT Line S and you can get the option of the all wheel drive version. But yeah, the handling's really nice. It feels nice and planted. There's not much in the way of lean or roll in the corners. And the steering is also light enough that it makes it an absolute doddle to park. But just be aware that the EV6 is not the smallest of cars. It is pretty long. And that's actually something as well I will mention about it is when you're actually looking behind you in the EV6, you do have this big bulge of a wheel arch, which actually kind of shows it's got a bit of presence about it and it, you know, it has those big haunches on there. So it is quite cool to see them in the rear view mirror, especially when you don't expect to see that in a Kia. But handling wise, I'm very impressed by it. There's a nice amount of feedback coming through the steering. It has got a nice bit of weight to it, but for day for today driving, you'll have no issues whatsoever. It's absolutely brilliant for every day. But if you do want to chuck it into corners with a bit of enthusiasm, yeah, you will get some rewards from it. Probably not the biggest smile on your face from say a GT Stinger, but yeah, at least you can get a bit of a smile coming back and you know that you are in the sporty EV of the Hyundai Group range. So what have been some of the highlights and some of the low points I've experienced living with the EV6 this week? Well, highlights have been the comfort levels. I mean, it's a very comfortable car, and when I've been doing my commute to work to and from, it's been lovely and relaxing. Now, yes, as I mentioned, the suspension is a little bit firmer than the Ionic 5, but it's still absolutely fine for everyday driving and even a long cruise on the motorway. The safety systems are actually pretty good, but I will mention that the lane keep assist can be a little bit oversensitive, particularly in any uh, corners that you might encounter. Even when you think you're kind of planted in the center of the lane, you might get a little jolt in the steering. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, speaking of safety systems, one of the negatives I've also come across is just kind of, well, I was expecting blind spot monitoring on this entry level air, and I'd like to see this on all electric vehicles that there is like a base set of safety systems 
on all electric vehicles. So I don't mind that we haven't got the blind spot detection cameras, but blind spot monitoring on the wing mirrors would have been a nice, helpful bonus. And just to kind of know that you've got that safety there in a car like this would be really handy. But other than that, no, I mean, I've got no other complaints. It's been very comfortable. I love the looks. It's actually a very practical car as well. It just does everything really well that an electric vehicle should. And with the charging capabilities and the range, well, as we've seen from the Hyundai group in general, they're on a roll. They're producing cars that people want. And what I love as well is that you've got a real good choice from the Hyundai group. I know it's only three cars, at the moment, but on this platform, you've got three very different cars. You've got the Ionic 5, which is literally just coming the other way, which I think looks amazing and is very comfortable and packs full of tech. We've got the EV6, which is slightly sportier, so therefore it drives a little bit better, but we have the same amount of tech and we've got plenty of space. And then we've got the GV60, which yes, it's a little bit less practical, but it looks very quirky, but it also feels very premium and drives beautifully. We really are in a brilliant age now where if you're looking for an electric vehicle, there is so much choice for you. I mean, if you don't want Hyundai Group, you can go to Ford, you can go to Audi, you can go anywhere and get yourself a really good electric vehicle. Heck, even MG now have an SUV which does nearly 280 miles, and that's less than 40 grand. We really are in a great age now, but if you want something, a real perfect EV, you won't go wrong for the e with the EV6. The only thing I would say is, on a personal level, I would probably go for the Ionic 5. I just enjoy that bit of extra comfort from my electric vehicle, particularly if I'm doing a long drive. But other than that, you can't go wrong with the EV6 either. So what are my thoughts on the Kia EV6? Well, I think I just covered everything there when I was talking about the highs and lows, but this is a brilliant electric car. Just like the Ionic 5, it has a brilliant look to it. It's very practical. You can get tall passengers in the back of the car. But this is a little bit different to the Ionic 5. This is a little bit sportier. This is a little bit different in its, in its look. And as a result, it means you've got so much choice available to you. And I really do like that. Now, as I just said, if it was my money, because I have had this question thrown at me a couple of times now, out of the Hyundai Group cars, which one would I go for? Now, money, no object. I'd go for a GV60, I'd have the Sport Plus, I'd have it in that bright yellow with blue leather interior, sunroof and a Bang & Olsen sound system. Yeah, I've not been thinking about that at all much since my Frankfurt trip. But the real big question would be, which would I go for, the Ionic 5 or the EV6? And personally, I would go for the Ionic 5, it's just a little bit more comfortable and I do prefer the looks of the Ionic 5 to the EV6. Now that's not to say that's the better car or anything like that. I think you guys will be able to decide that for yourselves. But I love the fact that if you don't like the Ionic 5 but you want all that capability, you can go straight for the EV6 and you won't be disappointed. So in terms of an electric vehicle, this is absolutely brilliant for what it can do. In terms of an electric vehicle from the Hyundai Group, again, it's absolutely brilliant and you can't go wrong with it, so yeah. The Kia EV6, it is a brilliant car, a deserving car of the year from several publications, but I would take the other car of the year, and that's the Ionic 5. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Kia EV6. As always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. Now, if you've got any questions or queries or comments about the EV6 and my time with it, please put them down in the comment section below and I will do my utmost to answer them for you. Of course, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I think I've given TikTok a go as well. But please don't forget to subscribe on there as well. But in the meantime, guys, everyone stay safe. Have yourselves a great day. And I'm going to catch you all in the next video. So take care, everyone, and bye-bye.